All right, welcome in everybody to episode four of Sports Ache with John Reed. First few episodes, I had a different name, but I'm going with Sports Ache for now. Let me know if you don't like that name, if you had more creative uh, suggestions, but that's what I'm going with for now. Anyway, today in episode four, I'm going to discuss the Zverev and Karina Busta, Busta uh, tennis match, uh, team versus Medvedev, uh, Clippers versus Nuggets, Raptors and Celtics, uh, random news from around Major League Baseball, National Football League, and the association. Uh, I'll recap a few MLB games, then I'll cover the Lightning and Islanders playoff game in the NHL. Uh, then a few more MLB games, and that'll be it for today. So here we go, right away, right into it. Uh, Zverev and Carreño Busta. So Zverev um, had some horrible serves, many double faults in the first two sets. He lost those first two sets, 6-3 to three and 6-2. to two. Won the third and fourth sets, 6-3, six, 6-4. Six, uh, Carreño Busta was worked on with his right hip, low back. The trainer was working on him, massaged him. Mm, who knows what's going on there. Um, and then Zverev broke him for match point, and it was an unbelievable comeback. He got him. Um, it was it was really an unbelievable comeback, but also a huge choke by Carreño Busta. Um, huge smiles from Zverev. Uh, he dug so deep, very impressed, spectacular. Uh, according to tennis commentators, Zverev cannot afford a slow start like that in the final on Sunday, and I would have to agree. Um, moving on to team and Medvedev, uh, Johnny Mack, John McEnroe was commenting, commentating today he said uh, Medvedev will throw the kitchen sink at team and team likes to bludgeon the ball hit big and hit hard nothing uh, too surprising there uh, slow conditions cool weather uh, team served first he got a new haircut uh, three unforced errors on Medvedev in game one a rarity for him uh, Medvedev holding serve 93 percent of the time team breaking serve 43 percent of the time in this in this U.S. Open both stats are the highest in the tournament, so something's got to give. Um, team, more firepower, slower conditions favor team, and they were explaining that because team has this big, big, like, motion when he hits, the slower conditions favor him because the ball's moving sl more slowly. He has more time to set up and get more power behind each stroke. At least that's what they were theorizing. Uh, Medvedev lost his mind. Uh, at one point over not being able to challenge a call and then uh, even even team was saying let him challenge you know um, but for some reason and the announcer said that was questionable but for some reason the uh, announcers did not let uh, Medvedev challenge he crossed the net actually he walked over to team's side and pointed at the mark and he was right it was out but they didn't let him challenge uh, he got a code violation for crossing the net. He then proceeded to demonstratively and sarcastically apologize for crossing the net. It was really funny. He was like, um, oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize. And then he turned to team and he's like, I'm so sorry. Um, he did apologize to team in the crossover for the delay. Apparently he did give a sincere apology to team. But anyway, he had won 15 straight sets coming into the match. Uh, no man has ever won the U.S. Open without losing at least one set. And he did indeed lose the first set to team to keep that streak intact. Um, set two, uh, four deuces to get in the 5-5 five to five game. They ended up actually with six deuces in that 5-5 five five game. And team finally won to go up 6-5. Next game, team very frustrated and they go to a tie break. Team injured his ankle at some point earlier in the match before that. Uh, during the first uh, set. Anyway, he won the second set. Um, announcers seem to believe that it is a somewhat serious issue for team. Uh, they mention it frequently and say Medvedev had to, has to test the ankle, meaning Medvedev needs to make him run a little bit, test his ankle. Um, Medvedev has never won a five-setter. I thought that was very interesting. Medvedev has never won a five-setter. I'm, I'm sure he barely plays in any five-setters because he just dominates people so so quickly. Uh, he's up 3-0 in the third set. Uh, team loses game five. So now he's down 4-1 in the third set. Very loud and prolonged yelling, both in German and English. Something about a hard court and his shoes. He's slipped, and he's very, very frustrated. Uh, team clearly laboring now and hobbled. Medvedev had a set point. Team fought back and won the game. Now back on serve, trying to tie this set up five games to five. Gutty and gutsy performance. Team finishes off Medvedev in straight sets with an incredible comeback in set number three. He will be the favorite in the final. 21 of 13 last major matches won. Second straight final, and he won the U.S. Open. The, excuse me, the Australian Open. I uh, said his heel hurt. 
Uh, it says he has, uh, after a wrong step, he said his heel hurt after a wrong step. Uh, he changed shoe and with different insole and was better again. Says he's pain-free and hopes that it is not only adrenaline and that the foot actually feels better tomorrow. Uh, Zverev's major, Zverev's, Zverev's first major final, a rematch of Australia, two tie breaks in that match, super close. First serve, very precise, out of this world for Zverev, says team. Uh, he seems so much more mature than at the Australian Open. That, was, that last comment was my comment about team. So team was saying that Zverev's first serve is very precise, out of this world. Um, but yeah, I think team, team strikes me as very, more, very much more mature than he was at the Australian Open. He seems to have grown a lot. Um, moving on. We have the Clippers and the Nuggets game. So Clippers were on fire from three early. Uh, Paul Millsap was playing well, banging in the paint midway through the second quarter. Landry Shamit hit a three on the assist from PG after a fake screen and slip. He was wide open. He had 10 feet of separation. Murray hit the step back on Zubox. Swish, beautiful. That was a step back three. Uh, Clips up by 10 with four minutes left in the first half. Kawhi knifes in and slams it on the defender. I didn't catch who it was that got posterized, but somebody felt Kawhi for sure. Uh, on the other end, amazing steal by Kawhi on an attempted pass under the basket by Jokic. Murray uh, passed Zubak and over Kawhi, beautiful floater in the lane. Beverly, good from three. Marcus Morris, nice and one. Uh, six points in the first half for Marcus Morris. And then Morris and Millsap got into it. You know, Morris was fined $35,000 for hitting Luka Doncic in the face and ejected from the game. And the NBA did cite his past uh, altercations as part of the reason for their ruling but that's neither here nor there uh, Morris elbowed Millsap in the head uh, Morris uh, Millsap pushes back Morris pushes back Reggie Miller wanted double tees but only Morris got teed up uh, definitely should have been a flagrant one for my money 12 point lead at the half for the Clippers Barkley guarantees Denver uh, Denver's jet is already filling up he said Clips, Clips will win by 20 Reggie Jackson and Morris looking at the backboard and, and the rim as an employee adjusts it brought out a level. So apparently the rim was not level. Moving on to the second half. Michael Porter Jr. caps a 13-2 Denver run with an alley-oop to Mason Plumley. Doc Rivers calls timeout. Uh, that was a huge, huge run. And um, Paul Millsap was a big part of that. Um, yeah, Michael Porter Jr. made a nice play there to cap that 13-2 run. Uh, with the alley oop to Mason Plumley, Doc calls timeout. Uh, defense, uh, defense, defense, defense for the Nuggets. Uh, Jokic getting hyped as hyped AF. Um, Murray heating up and hitting threes. LA hasn't scored in over four minutes. Denver's take Denver takes a lead with six minutes left in the fourth. A big lead. They took the lead about a minute before that, but they grew their lead with about six minutes left in the fourth. Murray draws a foul on Beverly at the four minute mark left in the game. Denver at that point was six of seven from three in the fourth quarter. That was with three minutes and 41 seconds left in the fourth. Marcus Morris shot a uh, three-pointer air ball, but Murray got overzealous, flying in for the rebound and knocked it out of bounds. Paul George misses a three. Harris air balls a three. The score at that point was 102 to 94 in favor of Denver. So they were up eight points. Grant fouls Kawhi. Uh, Oh, and this, at this point, I should mention, Paul Millsap had 14 points in that third quarter, and the announcers were going on and on about how he lit their fire and they were playing like zombies, they said, before he went on that run and, and really charged the guys up and got them back into the game. Paul George, nice move to get a mid-range baseline jumper. He connects. Jokic trying to get uh, Michael Porter Jr. to move off ball. Michael Porter does not move. Um and at this point, I want to mention Michael, Michael Porter Jr.'s comments last game after the game. He criticized his coaches. Um, he's a rookie. You know, he criticized his coaches. He said, we're running too much through Jokic and Murray. They know what we're doing. Uh, we need to switch things up. And people said, you know, why are you criticizing your coaches? That's very uh, taboo, I, I suppose, in the NBA to publicly denounce your coaches. And everybody's saying, oh, this guy's so immature. And you got to keep that in-house. Even if you feel that way, you shouldn't badmouth your coaches publicly well he said i don't care so it looked like on that play um it looked like on that play Jokic was trying to get him to move they were trying to run a certain play and he gave it to him and it, i assume the uh play was for him to pass it but he didn't he took a three and he made it it felt like a dagger it was awesome 
Uh, Harris, Gary Harris, which is uh, the Nuggets' best perimeter defender, fouls out on Kawhi. Uh, it looked like he had all ball, but then his hand kind of moved up to his wrist. Neither here nor there. I thought it was questionable call. I thought it was good defense, but hey, is what it is. Torrey Craig comes in, checks in for Harris since he fouled out. L.A. at that point was on a 6 to nothing run. So Lou Will comes in for Beverly with a minute and 30 left. Lou immediately misses a three. Michael Porter – oh, and this is – sorry. This is when MPJ, MPJ, Michael Porter Jr., hit his three, um, and it looked like when the, the plan was to run a play. And so then Paul George misses a three. Paul George takes the ball from Jokic on a bad pass from Murray. Michael Porter, Michael Porter Jr. blocks Zubac. This was an awesome – block on Zubak and uh ball goes out to the it ends up with the Clippers he blocked it and it, it bounced out to a Clipper player I think it was PG PG chucks a three MPG gets the rebound MPJ Michael Porter Jr. gets the rebound over Zubak and Morris and uh Marcus Morris fouls him and then uh Paul George fouls Monte Morris on the ensuing inbounds Monte goes one for two from the line 29 seconds left in the game PG to Kawhi for three. Timeout Denver. Beverly fouls Michael Porter Jr., who goes two for two at the line. Cold-blooded rookie from Missouri who spent his senior year of high school in Seattle before, in, before going back to Missouri for college. This kid is, I'll admit, I thought it was really immature of him to say that about the coaches after last game, but he came out tonight and took the game in his hands in the last six minutes or so. I mean, the la he had so many good plays in the last few minutes. Um, so then, uh, PG fouls Michael Porter Jr. again, who again goes two for two from the line. So he went four for four in the line in the last minute of the game in clutch free throw situations, ice cold. Denver survives and they'll play a game six. Uh, 35 year old Paul Millsap was the spark. Michael Porter Jr. Late heroics. Murray and Jokic stellar as always. Murray had a great stat line. He had something like 25 points eight assists seven rebounds clutch uh michael porter jr says of his awesome three-pointer late in the fourth against the clips quote everybody know it wasn't the best shot selection but i shot it something but i shot it something just made me shoot it it was a god thing uh, i love that kid i love michael porter jr i will and i know nuggets fans love him too i'll be watching him in the future for sure exciting i'll be watching him next game uh Clips had an 83% chance to win the game. The Nuggets trailed by 15 points in the third quarter. They finished it off. Moving on to Celtics-Raptors. Uh, Boston wins the opening tip. Lowry opens up with a three, uh, set a screen, and uh, switched Kimba on to him. Uh, Lowry's had a lot of success in that matchup against Kimba Walker. Um, Gasol's shot looks awful. He looks very out of shape. If you look at Gasol, he looks overweight. His shot, terrible. And then again, after that, another Gasol awful, awful shot. I wrote here, looks so out of shape. <laughs> Missed two threes in a row. He's like one for tw 22 or something, or two for 22 in the whole series from three. It was just awful. The guy must have just not worked out, not stayed in shape over the long break. I mean, it shows. He's really not in shape. His arms are just flabby. It's like, what are you doing, bro? Just mailing it in, obviously. I mean, they should have benched him, in my opinion. That's on coaching. Uh, might have won that game they didn't have him in um, Ibaka makes a three shooting over 50 percent from three in this series um, Toronto bench comes back from being down in the first Raptors uh, Van Vliet makes a nice drive and layup after making a three um, to give the Raps a lead Ibaka strong strong offensive rebound and put back inside Celtics Robert Williams Robert Williams has been very impressive for the Celtics they extended his contract before this season so he has one more contract next season which I assume will be at cheaper than cheap at a lower value than what they're getting so good job at the Celtics front office extending that guy because he's been awesome for them this postseason um great offensive one-handed putback by by that guy Robert Williams Ibaka fouled on a three-point attempt by Kemba Walker landed in the landing zone but just a common foul not a flagrant despite someone else in these playoffs getting a flagrant for a landing in the landing zone uh, Smart, Marcus Smart draws a charge on Ibaka after getting the steal on a uh, Van Vliet pass and, and and lobbing up the alley-oop to Tatum. So Smart had a great sequence there. He lobbed up a beautiful alley-oop to Tatum, then got a steal uh, on a Van Vliet pass. Or sorry, it, No, I got that backwards. He got the steal on the Van Vliet pass, then lobbed it up for an alley-oop to Tatum. 
Then he draws a charge on the other end. Then he goes down and gets another bucket right after that. So great sequence for Marcus Smart. Uh, and then uh, and then Smart, with a huge steal, making a break for a loose ball, steals it and takes it to the rack himself. So, I mean, Smart was awesome in this game, and everybody knows that. He was awesome in this series as well. Um, game two, he had a big game. Okay, so halftime. Chuck calling on Kemba to step it up and play like the, uh, the Yukon Kemba. Gasol, with, and here we go at the second half. Gasol has a great steal and breaks out OG Ananobi, who gets fouled hard on the arm by Tice, who picks up his fourth. Uh, Ananobi slams into the stanchion and stays down for a while, but it appears he's okay. Lowry finally gets it going, but he has been struggling tonight. Sixth career Game 7 for Lowry at age 34. He's 3-2 and two in his previous Game 7s. Lowry misses the free throw on the three-point play, so it's 64-63 to 63 Boston at this point. Lowry makes a nice play to save a ball. Fourth quarter begins. Uh, Boston scores quickly to make it 75-71. to 71. A three by Walker and drew an offensive foul on the other end to put the ball back in the hands of Boston. Another sloppy turnover by the Raps. Siakam just loses the ball right into the hands of Tice. Tatum drives and lays it in as he shields off Ibaka with his right hand. Jalen Brown injured slightly early in the fourth quarter after he slipped and appeared to maybe stretch his groin a little too far. Apparently, he was okay, though. Uh, and Marcus Smart with a block on Powell, a chase-down block on Powell when it looked like Powell was going to be able to lay it in. Awesome chase-down block by Marcus Smart. Toronto could have tied it up there. Uh, Kemba dribbles. Uh, Van Vliet is on Kemba. Uh, he drives. Kemba drives, hits Grant Williams under the basket, who is fouled at the end of the shot clock. Uh, we'll head to the line. Nick Nurse is challenging the call of a foul on Kyle Lowry, which is his sixth. Um, foul confirmed, Lowry out. So at this point, Lowry leaves the game. Tatum uh, fouled with 34 seconds left. He goes up and gets a strong rebound and gets fouled with 34 seconds left. He goes one for two from the line. Three-point lead for Boston, so they still have life because Tatum only went one for two from the line there. Van Vliet puts up a three, but it was affected and or maybe blocked by Grant Williams. Great defense there at the very end by... Grant Williams on Van Vliet. Kemba comes up with it and is fouled. He goes to the line, and the Celtics win, as I predicted. MLB blurbs for today. Garrett Cole, seven innings, zero runs, two hits. Game was only seven innings long, as there was a doubleheader. Hanser Alberto, former uh, Texas Ranger, got the first hit in the fifth. So Hanser Alberto broke up Cole's uh, no-hitter. However, he still went the full seven innings. MLB is not giving... Uh, no-nos or complete games for the seven innings. Um, Phillies crushing, very impressive rookie named uh, Nola. Yankees uh, Voigt hit two bombs in their in the seventh uh, second game of their back-to-back -back today. Voigt uh, with um, Judge and Stanton coming back next weekend. Voigt heating up, looks good. He's the sixth fastest Yankee to 50 home runs ever. So the sixth fastest New York Yankee to reach 50 home runs ever. Awesome for him. Awesome for him. Um, Tampa Bay Rays become the first team since the 1900 uh, since the year 1900 to plate nine pure lefties in a game. Um, that's one of those obscure stats I never would have even thought of. Uh, Zach Wheeler rips fingernail, putting on pants. Said, quote, one of those stupid things. I tripped a little bit, I lost my balance, and my jeans yanked out of my hand. So Wheeler are going to miss some time for a ripped fingernail, but apparently only a couple days. But yeah, I guess you got to let that heal. Potentially a huge injury for the Braves as Ronald Acuna Jr. fouls a pitch hard off his left ankle. He could put no weight on it. Uh, he was very visibly upset. He had to be helped off the field by a man under each arm. He could put no weight. I watched it. I was watching this game, and he was really hobbling bad. I mean, he was supporting that left just suspending that left foot off the ground it wasn't even he wasn't even trying to put any weight on it um the giants um and padres games for both tonight friday night and tomorrow saturday uh that would be september 12th um were postponed due to a positive test for coronavirus in the giants organization they didn't say if it was a player or some other member of the organization however um that's that those two games have been postponed now, the World Series would start October 20th at Globe Life Field in Arlington, Texas, under Major League Baseball's proposed bubble playoff format. 
awaiting sign off by Major League Baseball play, uh, Players Association. The hang up is players' families, quarantine, etc., and details on that. They're working out the details. Hopefully, we'll get to see playoff baseball this year. Hopefully, we'll get to see a World Series in Arlington. That would be great. Ty France homers for Seattle to make it three uh, to four in the uh, eighth inning, but they did end up losing that game to the Diamondbacks. Um, okay. Moving on, uh, some news from the NFL. Von Miller had his ankle surgery today. Timeline is considered to be four to six months on that. Probably season ending for, for Von Miller. Pat Mahomes is now 8-0 in his career in September with 26 TDs and zero INTs, just so you know. Eagles offensive tackle Lane Johnson is considered day-to-day, -day, recovering from ankle surgery in August. The backups to Johnson have zero NFL starts among them. Mike Evans, hamstring, will be game-time decision, but listed as doubtful. Breeze said, I'm on borrowed time. I've got nothing to lose, so I'm turning it loose. Father Time's going to get us at some point, but we're trying to beat him out for now. Brady and Bucks look for a statement win against a Saints team that's won the division the last three seasons. Kenny Galladay, doubtful. Cowboys restructure Lawrence, create $12 million in cap space, have created $27 million in cap space with recent restructures. That could be in anticipation of a Dak deal or in anticipation of an Earl Thomas deal. Who knows? Seahawks special teams coordinator leaves team. Larry Izzo will take over in interim. News from the NBA. Daniel House Jr. Uh, is done for the season. Uh, this is a Houston Rockets player. He's a prominent player for them. He has emerged a lot for them this year. Very important player to them. He missed games three and four of their series against the Lakers, which they lost both of those games, and they sorely missed him. And it was reported that he uh, had a female visitor in his room breaking the bubble, the quarantine. News came out today that the NBA confirmed that their investigation did indeed confirm that Daniel House did have a female visitor for multiple hours with him. Uh, I have read online that House's wife has deleted all their pictures together. Los Angeles Lakers seeking first conference finals appearance since 2010. Um, more about the Braves Acuna Jr. Uh, injury fouled his ball and fouled the ball into his left ankle he was emotional he was helped off the field placing no weight on the ankle as I said earlier looked very serious um, Nats were crushing the Braves early uh, fed 84 pitches through four and two-thirds innings by the end of the top of the fifth Braves had played a two run so it was five to two after the fourth uh, so at this point I'll go into a little uh, you know review of the Braves game for today and move on to a couple more MLB games. But uh, the Braves came all the way back within three in the top of the ninth with three runs in the top of the ninth to tie it up. Um, Brave, and then in extra innings, Braves reliever Melancon does a great job of surviving the bottom of the 10th to take it to the top of the 11th. Ozzy Albee surprises everyone with a bunt. Uh, pitcher misplays the ball off the end of his glove because he was looking to first too soon. It's like an NFL player tries to run before they catch the ball, tries to look upfield before they catch it, and they drop it. Similar situation here. Albies to first, runner to third, nobody out. During the next at bat, Albies steals second. Enciarte retired on a checked swing tip into the glove. Freeman intentionally walked to set up the double play. Ozuna comes to the plate 5-for-5 five five on the night with a homer and four RBIs as the reigning player of the week. Ozuna retired. Darno grounds out to end the inning with no damage done after bases loaded with one out. Eaton retired to go to the 12th. So that was fast for so I'm fast forwarding a little bit. Longest game of the season so far is 13 innings. Bottom of the 11th, one out. Sorry, bottom of the 12th, one out as Drupal Cabrera strikes out on a backup slider outside. Bottom 12 still in, intentional walk to Soto to bring up Harrison with one out after a sack fly had advanced the runner to third. Harrison hitting 292 on the year. Harrison looks foolish and strikes out on Dayton's uh, ninth pitch to bring up Michael A. Taylor, who gets a base hit to walk it off as Eaton crosses the plate. Heartbreaking for the Braves to come all the way back. The Braves had 22 men uh, left on base. If you'll remember yesterday, I believe it was, the the. Braves scored 29 runs, so I think they were trying to leave 29 on base to tie that number. Moving on to the Rangers and Athletics game. Uh, the Rangers starter, opener as they say, 
uh, Luis Garcia loads the bases and gives up a grand slam to Matt Olson without recording an out. The manager then pulled him. Rangers debut for Sam Huff um, might be of note. He did not do much, I don't believe, in this game. I know he was 0 for 2, and if he got a hit after that, good for him, but I didn't see it. Elvis Andrus, amazing defensive play to get Chris Davis at first. Uh, and apparently, I heard while I was uh, watching this game, they're going to combine last year's record with this year's record to, def to determine draft order. This was... Uh, I'm interested in this because my Rangers might have a chance at getting the top draft pick this year, or maybe not. Uh, Rugnet Odor seemed to be hurt on a tag by Fires halfway down the first base line, looked like his left hip, but it didn't affect him too much apparently because in his next at bat he got a two-run home run to bring the Rangers within three. It was nine to six at this point in the bottom of the eighth. 412 foot, no doubter, no doubter, stink bomb for Rugi. Rugi immediately puts his head down, loved Selly. Uh, Guzman strikes out swinging. Jesse Chavez is in for the top of the ninth. Chavez loads the bases with one out. Elvis Andrus, great catch on a pop-up in foul territory, but the runner was able to tag, it, tag up and score from third anyway. 10-6 Athletics. I believe that was the final score, 10-6. Moving on to the Tampa Bay Lightning and the New York Islanders. So Lightning uh, left wing Alex Kalorn out for this game for his hit on Isles center Brock Nelson, who will play tonight. But he, you could see he had some bruises on his face from that hit into the boards. Isles' goal, after much confusion around the net, Cal Clutterbuck puts it in net as players just slowly mill about, apparently expecting play to be stopped. Vasilevsky's right pad came off, and the Lightning were just standing around. Odd, odd goal for sure. Moving on, Gord assists to Sergachev for a goal by Bolts to tie it 1-1 with three minutes left in the first. Asked for a description on Lightning subreddit, User second prize said, Gord go whoop, sir go nasty, top corner from up close. Vasilevsky saved 16 of 17 shots in the first. Isles' beautiful puck movement from tape to tape to go up 2-1 and a fight on the same play. Gorgeous, gorgeous goal to go up 3-1 in second period. Lightning score to make it 3-2. Shots on goal even at 27 with 17 minutes left in the third. Lightning, great shot, block on, great shot block on the Islanders' power play with 12.30 left in the third. They successfully kill the penalty. Lightning score on a deflection in front of net with 7.56 remaining. Refs looking at it. Stick was pretty high, about as close as you can get to the height of the crossbar. Call is upheld. We have a good goal. Tie game, 3-3. Rangers score late in the third. Uh, Brock Nelson gives them the lead 4-3. Lightning pull their... Brock Nelson, by the way, was the one that got hit by the other player that was suspended for the game tonight. Good for him to get an assist and a goal tonight. Uh, Lightning pull their goalie with 130 left. Intense puck battles in front of the Isles net. Isles on the breakaway are awarded the goal, uh, or, but put it in the net anyway. So Isles had a breakaway. The defender knew he was going to get beat. He knew the Isles player was going to put it in the uh, empty net. And uh, <laughs> he uh, he just slashed him. He was It was frustration. He just slashed him on the leg, and he didn't like it. Um, three or four fights break out behind the net. Pajot goes to the locker room. The players have to be separated. Lots of jawing. It all started when Kucherov slashed Pajot's legs as he was as he was scoring, and Pajot went after him. Then everyone got in on it. Martin and Goudreau uh, go at it when play resumes. So right when they puck dropped with 30 seconds left in the game after it was already 5-3, to three, Martin and Goudreau dropped the gloves. Uh, Martin hit him in the back of the head three times, and Goudreau fell. No real damage done. Martin jawing as he went to the uh, locker room. Uh, hits keep coming until the very last second, and even after that, the Isles get their first win of the series. Good game. Uh, moving on, Brewers and Cubs. Uh, Christian Yelich 0 for 3 on the night, bottom of the ninth with three strikeouts. In the bottom of the ninth, Yelich is 0 for 3 on the night with three strikeouts. Cubs uh, pitcher Wick uh, falls behind in the count 3-1 and ends up walking Yelich. Brings up Giorco, uh, Jeffress warming in the Cubs bullpen. Giorco 0-3 on the night. Gets a base hit opposite field on a pitch inside to reach safely and advance Yelich to third. Runners on the corners with no one out here in the bottom of the ninth. Wick exits with 23 pitches to bring in Jeffress. Jeffress faces off. Jeffress, by the way, another former Ranger. Jeffress faces off against Braun, who is 0-3 on the night. First pitch strike. Second pitch, 94 mile per hour inside for a fastball, uh, for a ball, excuse me, one and one count. Braun pops it up to the outfield, handled by Hayward, I believe, and the, and the runner scores, the runner from third scores. Uh, the win goes to Hayter, he is one and one on the season. The loss goes to Wick, who is 0 and one on the season. Final score, one to nothing, Brewers. 
Um, Angels and Rockies played tonight. The Angels were trailing the Rockies two to three going into the top of the eighth inning. Angels solo home run, home run by Walsh to tie it three to three. Another solo Angels homer off of Bard in the top of the ninth. Anthony Bimbloom, second homer this season. Um, Renjifo strikes out on Bard's 12th pitch. Buttry comes in for the Angels to close it out in the bottom of the ninth. Fly out, caught by Joe Adele. And then solo homer by McMahon, tied up 4-4. Four to four. Apo Taco, change up that he stayed back on. McMahon had been striking out has been striking out at a 44% rate, been struggling bad. Fuentes up, one for three on the night. Ball gets down for Fuentes. He gets into second standing up. So he had a double into the alley. Into the It was a gapper. Um, intentional walk to Murphy to bring up Tapia with one out. Pitching change by Joe Madden to bring in a left-hander. Trevor Story will be after Tapia, so the left-hander will have to stick around and face him due to the three batters rule that's just been implemented this year. Quijada comes in and retires a man, but then falls behind 3-0 to Story. He walks Story on four pitches to load the bases. Charlie Blackman to the plate. Tie game, bottom of the ninth. Quijada throws two balls, but the second one was called a strike, so it was a one-and-one -one count at that point. Ump didn't want to go home early, I suppose. Then it was a two and one count. Then it was a three and one count. Blackman walks it off with the grand slam. Good for the Rockies. The White Sox, one of my personal biggest surprises, right up there with the A's this year. The White Sox bring in Colome to close it out in the top of the ninth inning against the Tigers, working with a one run lead, four to three. First batter reaches. Uh, Tigers are three games back of Cleveland in their division, just FYI. Um, they are certainly not in a – they are at the third in their division, but only three games back. So that's definitely uh, within striking distance. Um, but Romine at the plate, uh, one and two count, fouls one off. Romine retired. Uh, Paredes to the plate, 0-3 oh on the night. Paredes falls behind 0-2 oh in the count. Grounder up the middle is fielded and pitched to second for the force out. Reyes to the plate, 0-4 oh on the night. Uh, two and one count, big swing from Reyes on a pitch down in the zone, two and two count at this point, and he strikes him out to end it on another pitch down in the zone. Final score, four to three, White Sox. Um, so for as for this evening, that'll do it. Just wanted to fill you in on the games of the day. Thank you so much for listening. If you don't mind, go ahead and like and subscribe for more content, especially tomorrow night. I'll be giving you my Dallas Stars, Vegas Golden Knights, Game 4 highlights. And we will be cheering on the stars right here. Got my bobbleheads and everything. All right, go stars. Good night, everybody.